Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CCSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to data discovery, classification, and log review in Domain 2 to understand how they relate and to guide your studies. This is the fourth of five videos for Domain 2. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are a small part of our complete CCSP masterclass. Data discovery is the process of identifying, locating, and cataloging data across an organization's various systems, storage locations, and applications. Data discovery helps organizations understand what they have, where it resides, and what it's being used for, all of which are essential for data security, regulatory compliance, and efficient data management. Data discovery is exactly what it sounds like, organizations discovering what data they have. Let's now define two major types of data. Structured data is highly organized and formatted so that it can be easily stored, accessed, and processed. It typically resides in relational databases, spreadsheets, or other structured formats to adhere to a specific schema, rows, and columns of data. Unstructured data is the opposite. It lacks a predefined structure, making it more difficult to store and analyze using traditional database tools. Unstructured data often consists of texts, pictures, videos, and other content that does not fit into neat rows and columns. Metadata is data about other data. Metadata helps describe the structure, origin, usage, and characteristics of a data set, making it easier to manage and discover. Metadata is stuff like when a file was created, last modified, and by whom. Moving on to the next major subject, asset classification is fundamentally about ensuring that assets receive the appropriate level of protection. What is an asset? Anything of value to the organization. People, buildings, equipment, software, data, and intellectual property are all assets, among many others. In security, we often just speak of data classification. We should be talking about asset classification, which encompasses data classification and clearly implies that we should be classifying all the assets of the organization and protecting them appropriately. The first step in asset classification process is creating and maintaining an asset inventory, a catalog, a listing of all the assets from across the organization. For every single asset of reasonable value, there should be a clearly defined owner. It is critical to determine who the asset owner is as the owner is accountable for the protection of an asset. The owner is best positioned to determine how valuable an asset is to the organization and thus what classification the asset should be assigned. As I already mentioned, we want to emphasize here, and the reason we classify assets is so that we can identify how valuable they are to the organization and therefore the appropriate level of protection that is required. Classification is a system of classes ordered according to value. For example, public, proprietary, and confidential would be three classes that an organization could use to define with public being the least valuable and confidential being the most Different organizations will choose different classes based on whatever best suits their needs. So don't memorize any particular classification scheme as they vary significantly from organization to organization. Security labels are the means used to associate a set of security attributes with a specific information object as the data structure for that object. In other words, labels are meant to be read by the system to understand the classification of data and therefore the protection required. Security marking is very similar. The means used to associate a set of security attributes with objects in human readable form. In other words, labels are meant to be read by people to understand the classification of data and therefore the protection required. So remember labeling, system readable, marking, human readable, both are used to identify the classification of an asset. The final major piece here is categorization, which is the act of sorting assets into the defined classes. Categorization is a process of putting assets into different classes. I'll give you an extra couple of definitions here. Sensitive data refers to any information that must be protected due to its potential misuse or harm if exposed. This covers personal information, financial details, or any other confidential information. Personal data is a subset of sensitive data. Personal data is any information relating to a person, a data subject which can include their name, address, email address, even IP addresses, things like that. 
Moving on to the final major subject of this mind map, log review and analysis. Logging and monitoring is all about making sure that the correct event data is generated from all sorts of different systems across the environment, aggregating the data and analyzing it. Logging and monitoring is obviously a very important part of security. So where can we collect log data from across the cloud? The answer is essentially everywhere. Almost every system can generate log event data. Virtual and physical network devices like firewalls, routers, and switches, IDS and IPS systems, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems, virtual machines, containers, serverless functions, operating systems, applications, anti-malware. I mean, we can collect log event data from just about anything. We must be selective though. Many systems are capable of generating an avalanche, an obscene amount of event data. So we need to configure systems to only log what is relevant. We also need the capability to review all the logging event data that is being generated, ideally as close to real time as possible. It's not super ideal to review your logs and realize you've had a significant breach months after it has occurred. There are also significant cost considerations for logging and monitoring in the cloud. Remember, you pay for what you use in the cloud. Every log event that is generated, stored, and replicated to the SIM system incurs costs. Generating mountains of log event data and consuming significant compute time to analyze all the events can get very expensive very fast. Some food for thought there. So what specifically are we monitoring for in the log event data? Errors, if we see, for example, that our web server is generating many 404 file not found messages. This is a clear indication that something is broken and needs to be fixed on the server. Another thing we can monitor for is modifications, but more specifically, unauthorized modifications. It's not uncommon for attackers to exploit a vulnerability to break into a system and then patch that vulnerability behind themselves after they've installed something like a backdoor. Therefore, looking for unauthorized patching of a system may be an indication of a breach. And the final major thing that we can look for is, of course, Breaches. <laughs> From a security perspective, one of the main things we're monitoring for is if any of our systems have been breached. Our systems being used for cryptocurrency mining? Is data exfiltration occurring? Uh, are we having a really bad time with ransomware or something like that? As I mentioned, one of the major challenge is the plethora of devices and systems that can generate log event data from across the cloud and the volume of event data that they can produce. Finding significant events is very much like looking for a needle in a haystack. Accordingly, we need to use systems that automate many of the tasks and much of the analysis required for logging and monitoring. These systems are commonly referred to as SIM systems, or as they should probably, probably be pronounced, SIEM, SIEM systems, security information and event management systems. I'll now go through the major capabilities of any good SIM system. Aggregation is the SIM system's ability to aggregate or collect event data from all these different devices across the environment into one central system. Next, the SIM system will normalize the data, clean up the event data from disparate devices so that all the data and the variables are comparable in the same format. Correlation is analyzing incoming logs from multiple systems for logical sequences, patterns, and values to identify events that are invisible to individual systems. Correlation is the ability of a SIM systems to look at multiple log events in combination. SIM systems are often used to provide long-term secure storage of log event data. Individual devices may have limited storage capabilities, so by replicating and aggregating the log event data in the SIM system, the SIM system can provide long-term secure storage to meet regulatory requirements, company policies, etc. Analysis is the SIM system's ability to analyze all of the event data that is pouring in to look for the proverbial needle in the haystack. The SIM system will apply various analysis techniques, such as event correlations, statistical models, rules, etc., to look for errors and anomalies. If something suspicious is detected, the SIM system will raise an alert that an analyst can look at and act upon as necessary. Continuous monitoring, which is sometimes referred to as continuous security monitoring, CSM, is the process where an organization identifies all of their systems, identifies the risks associated with each of those systems, applies the appropriate controls to mitigate the risks, and then continuously monitors the controls to assess their effectiveness against ever-changing threat landscape. Now, related to all this logging and monitoring stuff is the chain of custody. The chain of custody is the chronological documentation that records the sequence of custody, control, transfer analysis, and disposition of evidence. 
why are we talking about the chain of custody here in this section on logging and monitoring? Because our logs may contain important evidence for an investigation, and it may be required to establish a chain of custody for log event data. Finally, the last definition here in this mind map. Non-repudiation is the concept that the sender of data or the signer of a document or someone that did something <laughs> cannot deny that they did it. Non-repudiation basically means that someone can't deny having sent or done something. And here's the connection to logging and monitoring. Log event data is often used to show that someone did something so that they can't later deny it. The, the logs in our SIM systems are often used for non-repudiation. All right, that's an overview of data discovery, classification, and log review in Domain 2, covering the most important concepts you need to know for the exam. Thank you.